a person and a, a Palestinian kid here in Eretz Israel that he was a very intelligent kid and he was going to their school over there they were learning Quran it was a very religious school and he's learning Muslim learning in a fam Muslim family and he learns in school that poor kid was always been beaten by his father and his brothers the father and his brothers they hated him always they were beating him and, he, and insulting him and hurting him he was a very poor kid and very intelligent one day in school came a very uh, big and important um, sheik to, to talk. And he was saying things against Am Israel that you need to go and kill the Jews and to make the war of jihad and stuff like that and that you need to murder Jewish people. So that poor kid lifted his hand in the air and he asked the mistake of his life or maybe the salvation of his life. He asked, where is it written? in the Quran that you need to go and kill Jews. That kid, he knew the Quran by heart. It doesn't written that you need to kill Jews. In the Quran, it's written that you need to respect Jews, that you need to respect all of the seed of Abraham Avinu, all of his children for the generation, especially the nation. We received the Torah. Christians, they also, I met a person on the way back from Uman. We made a stopping in Amsterdam. I'm walking with my family with our suitcases. Some, some Christian person comes to us, start to help us with the luggage. I, I say, hello, shalom aleichem, how are you? And he's talking and talking. And that person, he believes in Jesus and he's full with faith in Jesus and he loves the New Testimony and he admires the Bible and he loves the Jews. Why? Because we had the merit to receive as a nation the Torah from Mount Sinai. And none of the other nations had that merit. And he thinks that we're in a mistake, that we're not accepting Jesus. That's what he thinks. That's his faith. But it doesn't stop him from loving us and appreciating us on our merits, on the good things that, from his perspective, we do have. So that's the way to think. All right, you believe in Jesus. Great, go believe in Jesus. I don't mind. Go, do whatever you want. You believe in Muhammad. Great, no problems. Check the Quran. In the Quran, it doesn't say a bad word about us. So now what they're saying? No, there's not, those are not the real Jews. Oh, you know. You know who is real Jew and who is not a real Jew. What are you talking about? It's nonsense. So they don't know. And we ourselves also don't know. So that young kid, he was beaten by his father and brothers and he asked that sheik where is it written and that sheik was very embarrassed because it doesn't written nowhere so he immediately shouted him and the, 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 the teachers over there took him and punished him and they invited the father to know that his rude kid was insulting the important sheik today in school and embarrassing him and asking rude questions and of course he went back home and he got real nice education that day. At night his mother came to him, she told him, she was crying, she told him, listen, you don't have a future in this place anymore. You're 14 years old, you're going to manage, go, leave the village, go find your future, go live somewhere else. Your father going to kill you one day, you're not going to make it, go. And he was crying and she was crying and it took some I don't know what and went and he went to some Jewish city and he found a certain garage um, a Musach the people working Jewish worker working over there and he asked for a job and they let him and because that he was homeless they let him stay in the garage and like that he was he spent his life until he was 17 three years he was working I think in that garage and he was sleeping every night in the garage, working during the day. And the Jews, they loved him, and he was a very friendly person. Everyone loved him. And during Shabbos, that it's a day that we're not working in Shabbos, so he didn't have a place to be. So they were hosting him. The workers from the garage were taking him to their houses, <coughs> and they were hosting him for Shabbos, and they gave him Shabbos meals. And, and, one day, one year, in the third year, I think, it was the year, the, in that year there was, the, the Yom Kippur was in Shabbos. The day of the fast, that we're fasting, all of Am Yisrael are fasting, was in Shabbos. So they told that guy, listen, Muhammad, 
you cannot come to our house this Shabbos, we're sorry, it's Yom Kippur, we're not eating nothing, we're not drinking, there's no reason you, for you to come, so buy some food for yourself and stay in the garage. So he didn't really have what to do, so he... So at night, it was Friday night, and he went to, for a walk. It was night, the, the garage was closed, nothing there. So he started to walk. He saw Jews walking with talitot, wrapping themselves with talit, and going to shul, going to Bet Knesset. While they, while they went to the Bet Knesset, he started to walk after them. After them. It was, he was interesting to see that, what, what they're doing. He went into the Bet Knesset to shul, and he heard them singing, Lecha Dodi Likat Kala. While they're singing, Lecha Dodi Likat Kala, he started to cry. The song that we're accepting Shabbos, and that young guy started to cry, and he's crying and crying and crying. And he doesn't know why he's crying, and no one else understands who is he and what he's doing over there without Talit. And he went back to the garage, and he cried all of the Shabbos, and he didn't understand what happens with him, nothing. After Shabbos, he decided he's going to go to visit his mother. He went back to the village in the time that his father wasn't home, and the rest of his brothers, no one is there. He went home, knocked on the door, his mother opened, after three years they haven't met, they hugged, they kissed, they were crying, everything. While they, they, they're talking, he told her on his weird experience that he had, that he went to shul, to Bet Knesset. He told her, you know, I'm working in a garage, and nice Jews, they're helping me, they're feeding me, I have nice salary, I'm saving money, this and that. He probably gave her money, whatever, and everything. He told her, I went to Bet Knesset, it was Yom Kippur, and I started to cry. I heard that song and I started to cry. While he's telling her that, she started to cry also. He asked her, why are you crying? She said, no, no, no. And he started to, to take it out from her. What, what, why are you crying? She said, listen, I'm Jewish. I'm a Jewish woman and I converted to Islam to marry your father. And the reason that your father, he hated you all of those years, it's because you looked like two drops of water for my brother. You look exactly like my brother. And that's the reason that your father, he hates you, because you're reminding him of my brother, and he hates my brother that he's Jewish. So this is why always they called you Jewish, and always they were hitting you, and, and you're Jewish. And you and the rest of your young brothers, you're all Jewish. And she took out a picture that she had, and she gave it to her son, and she told him, I don't know who that grave belongs to, but that's one of our ancestors, and I don't know who it is. She gave him that picture, and he went. Você está assistindo Emoná Português. Seu apoio nos ajuda imensamente. Por favor, inscreva-se, curta e deixe-nos um comentário com qualquer dúvida que você tenha. O melhor de tudo é... Simplesmente compartilhar este vídeo, ajudando essas mensagens de fé a chegarem a todas as pessoas, não importa a sua origem. Fique bem e Shalom!